David Pishaw. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be here today to uh, talk about agricultural biotechnology. And, and I'm going to talk, I think, uh, as you'll see, just about as much about uh, uh, some of what's happened in terms of communications uh, about agricultural biotechnology with the public as I am about the, uh, the science uh, itself. But I, I will touch on, uh, on both. Uh, it, in order to, uh, to begin this, uh, I think it's important to put uh, where we are in agricultural biotechnology and modern agriculture in context of the, the past, uh, certainly the past uh, several decades, if not the past century, the, uh, the story of, uh, of modern agriculture is one of increasing application of a whole variety of technologies. You can think of things like hybrid seeds, increases in mechanization of agriculture, uh, increased use of fertilizers or chemical pesticides that have led to this really tremendous uh, increase in output and productivity that you see on on the, uh, the left-hand panel uh, uh, over time. Um, and biotechnology is, in many ways, just the latest of these new technologies brought to bear on agriculture for improved uh, productivity. And it's, it's, it's more critical today than ever, I think, uh, to uh, recognize that increasing productivity through the use of technology is really a critical need. Uh, in the face of increasing population, the increasing wealth uh, in, in many nations, which leads to increased demand on both uh, direct consumption of food uh, grown from plants as well as animal feed for uh, feeding uh, an increased uh, uh, demand for animal protein in many, many countries. But at the same time, especially as we look at it today, um, the, the discourse tends to be dominated uh, in many sectors by a discussion as to uh, whether or not modern technologies and modern agriculture, and I would say biotechnology is just an example of this now, are consistent with, uh, with, with uh, uh, the, uh, the desire for sustainability and, in fact, uh, perhaps even connectivity with food and food uh, production, as it's often framed. I, I think you see this, uh, especially these days, in, uh, in social media, where uh, discussions of sustainability are probably the uh, sort of dominant theme in terms of communications and discussions of agricultural biotechnology. I think it's interesting to, uh, to, to look at what attitudes uh, are about farming and about farmers, and I think they, they illustrate an interesting uh, dichotomy in this, uh, in this discourse and an interesting quandary for us when we think about communications. Uh, a recent poll by uh, U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance uh, that included both opinion leaders, uh, food communicators, and, uh, and consumers, about 1,400 people in total, about 71% of that audience expressed serious or some concerns about the methods used by uh, modern agriculture, by what we would might call conventional agriculture. At the same time, though, 75% of the same group viewed farmers uh, themselves as very or somewhat uh, uh, trustworthy. Um, so we have this interesting quandary, I think, between views about agriculture itself and the practices and about the practitioners. And in, I think in some ways this is due to an increasing gap between the public and farmers and agriculture in general. If you look at the U.S., uh, I think this is uh, kind of well-known data going back to the beginning of the last century when nearly half of the, uh, uh, the U.S. population and the U.S. workforce was, uh, was rural and worked in agriculture. We're now down to about only 2% of, uh, of the population uh, working in agriculture. So most people have very little direct connection with, with farming, with modern agriculture, with what the actual practices are that have led to, uh, to uh, this, this uh, increased output from agricultural practice. And in some ways, I think the challenge only increases as we apply more and more new technologies. If you go back not only uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the turn of the last century, uh, but, it, but even throughout the last century, 
Um, the technologies that were applied to increasing agricultural productivity, I think were generally understandable by the general public. Um, I think they were, they were, they were uh, things that could be related to without a uh, deep scientific education or understanding, while today, biotechnology itself, let alone what we'll see in the future, the applications of genomics and other technologies are themselves pretty mysterious to most of the public, and yet those are now the scientific basis uh, for, for agriculture and new technologies like biotechnology and agriculture. And this disconnect, I think, creates an opportunity and, uh, and, and a challenge for us. Uh, an opportunity for us to, uh, as this whole symposium is designed to do, to help us understand how best to communicate this, but a challenge as well as we recognize that these technologies become, to some degree, more and more complex and even more and more esoteric. Something I think that's worth noting, and this is, I, I think, a piece of the discussion that isn't always recognized in the, in the public discourse, is that the technology itself, or uh, better said, perhaps the products of the technology, are uh, tremendously successful in agriculture, both in terms of their impact, which I'll illustrate uh, a little bit more in the next couple of slides, but also in their adoption by those who you might consider the direct uh, customers, in fact, are the direct customers of the technology, that is, farmers themselves, whether in the industrialized countries like the US or in uh, developing countries like, uh, like China or India or uh, uh, Brazil and Argentina in Latin America. These technologies have been adopted by, uh, by, by literally millions of farmers grown on hundreds and hundreds of millions of acres every year. And yet, at the same time, I think this, this simple fact, if you will, about the nature of these technologies is, is often lost in, uh, in the discussion with the larger public. So what are these technologies? I'll touch just briefly on the science without too much scientific detail. Largely today, in fact, almost all of the products of agricultural biotechnology that we talk about when we talk about these technologies and their impact on farming are one of two types, either herbicide tolerance, which has been engineered into certain plants, especially corn, cotton, and soybean, or insect resistance, which again has been engineered into plants uh, especially corn and cotton and, and uh, a few others that are emerging, emerging now. Um, and the science here is really pretty simple. Uh, it involves the insertion of usually one or at most a handful of new genes, new in the sense that they come from species typically other than the crop plant itself, into the plant to confer a new useful trait, useful in these, in these cases to, uh, to, to, to help uh, uh, fend off weeds or insect damage to crops, um, and, and have had significant uh, positive impacts both in terms of productivity, in terms of yield of the crop plants that have been engineered in this way, as well as uh, significant reductions in, in pesticide use in many of these crops, as well as other benefits such as the adoption of uh, uh, less uh, uh, lower tillage uh, techniques for agriculture with commensurate reductions in soil erosion. So the science itself is pretty simple, um, and we're really just at the cusp of what is possible with this science. Um, We've engineered literally just a handful of genes into crop plants in terms of products, many, many others in research laboratories, but in terms of products, uh, out of the total gene space, if you will, of the world, in the universe, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot more that we can look at. And in fact, if you look at uh, publications, especially from academic labs, but also from industry labs, you'll see people working on genes that uh, potentially could impact plants in a whole variety of different ways. But in order to reach this sort of ideal plant that I've illustrated here, what we need is, is really freedom to operate, and that freedom to operate comes from really uh, trust between us scientists and those of us uh, technology practitioners in this field and the public. And that's really based on communication. And I think 
I think one of the things that, that I, I, I am looking forward to hearing more about is, is, is how we build that trust. And I think, I think it's uh, pretty clear from our history in biotechnology and agriculture over now the last uh, nearly 20 years in terms of products and closer to 30 years now in terms of the, the actual scientific research that underpins this is that we need to think more about meeting the public in terms of communication, both in terms of what issues they want us to, uh, to communicate about, as well as ways in which they would seek to communicate, which, uh, which seems to be increasingly dominated by uh, the internet and social media today. So I think this is, this is the challenge, and this is both the, the challenge and the opportunity for us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.